Two sheets like that. And then... What we do... It's upside down, so it's facing me. We go like that. And then what I do is we take a collection that will nicely fit the page. Alright. And you want to choose the page, so it's sort of as much of... It's like, because it's got some young... Some new growth and some old growth, so you take as much as as much information of it as you can. So take the old yeah, sort of bit Yeah, too. like that whole branch at the back there, like that. Oh, beauty. Okay. There we go. Maybe. A bit more, eh? Right? Yeah, maybe another one. What do you reckon? Yeah, another one. Close this one up. Look at Warren Quinn's. This way. And then that one. Showing you Bella Kendall. <laughs> That's it. And then we get the I'm gonna push it down gently. Good one. And I'll just move it up a little bit. So what was the date again? 29th. 29th, so we put the date. 29th of August, so you put the AUG 2021. And what did we think it was? We think it was a Thai lotus. You don't have to know what it is because we're not botanists, we're plant collectors. And the idea is that it gets identified in a herbarium by a botanist. So you don't have to know what it is. So I mean, if you think, wow, I've never seen that before, you know, you would make a collection and then the botanist knows that it grows there. And where are we? Page. Now, move me page. And then you put down the collector, so that's my name. And then... Chris. And then Chris, who it's made... Awesome. So your name would come to the collection. Chris, what's your second name? Wilson. Wilson. Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the name of other collectors, but you wouldn't actually name, you know, a group of eight or anything, but the commission, commission from Warren Walsh. Warren Walsh. <laughs> commission from Warren Walsh. Custodian. Okay, that's it. And so you can have a photo there. Look, you want to put this there, one there. Here. And then do you want to turn up? And then I would put your knee on that because the idea is that you want it pressed fairly tight. Yeah. How much more do you want? No. Um, I just collect yeah. all day, every day, if yeah. I could. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I was no, told, I was told by a botanist to hang on to it here because then you can let it go and it won't slip away. Yep. Like it. And then just a simple. Green off. Go through there. That's, that's it. Yep. And then you pull it towards your hand and it tightens up. Beauty. And then we'll just have another photo. Oh. What a lively. I, I do, oh, cool. I do that. Yep, and pull it back towards your hand. That's it. <laughs> and then what you're supposed to do is take a photo. We'll take a photo of the area. Yeah. And then okay. a close up of the plant. Mm -hmm. And then we're supposed to take a GPS recording. This plant that takes you through um, all the particulars on how to collect and preserve plants. It's a little bit of an ordeal to go through everything. And so I try to do 
fairly basic pieces of information and that if you have a particular interest to go further, there's pages there with no pictures <laughs> that says in more detail. Just in case you have a particular interest, like in how to collect lichen or how to collect fungi, there's many, many different ways of preserving the different types of plants. But I just thought I'd try and keep it fairly basic for, for this session because it would be pretty much first time you've collected any plants. Yes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Apart from just picking them. Yeah. This, is, um, this is to pick and preserve to a herbarium quality standard. And the idea is that the plants that you choose, it's all very well to have the plant beautifully pressed and preserved, but if you don't have the data to go with it, it's pretty much useless for a herbarium. They want to know um, the details of the plant, where it grows, what condition it's growing in, when it was collected, those sort of things. So um, generally, botanists do collecting, and they will have their own field notebook that is just theirs. We have some here for you today. Um, and the idea is that those books are kept by the botanists and they enter their collections into that same book all the time. If you're not a botanist but you collect anyway, um, oh, so when you've got your book, you then number every time you've made a collection. So when you put your data in, you can say, you know, your name and it's number 64 is the collection or 275 because you go through your book and it just goes one after the other. So that gets put into the herbarium data base. If you're not a botanist and you don't have a collecting book, well then it's just you know, your name and the date. So that's what we can use. So unless you want to be great collectors, Carmen, you're going to be one of them. <laughs> you're going to have to get your own collecting book. I'd like to be able to do that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, and it's an amazing season. I go out there because I haven't been here before either. I'm from um, Melbourne, and like I was saying to Morel, I worked um, on a project in Broken Hill. Do you know Broken Hill? It's all arid zone. And I go out here and I recognise the same plants, or the same genus at least. And it's wonderful seeing them so colourful. So it's a great time to collect mm -hmm. and there's someone else who mentioned it's a great time to collect seeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seed collecting and plant collecting. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two basic parts as you will see in this. There's two, two basic pieces of information and that is when you're collecting the plant and then capturing the data. So what I will go through is how to make a plant collection and then we'll talk about how to capture the data. So it's all it's all good fun capturing the um, picking the plants and stuff and then it's like, oh no, we forgot the label. Maybe it's the artist in me who has a little bit more trouble figuring out the label. Alright, so this is I don't usually look like this, and I'm hoping to win a prize for <laughs> my, my new design. <laughs> I'm actually going to take a photo of it and send it to a botanist I know who had this incredible looking plant press. I even took a film of how it was used, because I'm going to try and um, beat him in it. Plant presses are usually wooden, like this one you can see. And when I spoke to Karen at first, I said, oh, that's can you get a plant press? No. Oh, that's fine. We'll just make one. You know, from a wooden garden lattice. Mm. So I went to the hardware. And we don't have those. <laughs> oh, no. So Ben and I went looking for abandoned, um, abandoned oven racks. So it took a day to clean them. <laughs> but it's actually perfect. It's even got these little bits here. They hold it down. So I was really through. 
taught, oh, and just by the way, I'm not a botanist, I'm a botanical artist, so I've worked with botanists for many years. I was the botanical illustrator at the National Herbarium in Victoria for 10 years, and so I went out and worked with the botanists and I picked up all my knowledge about plants just hanging around with botanists. But sadly, I'm not. You probably should have an honorary doctorate. Oh, like, this, like no, Celia Rossa. Yes, I would love one. I should nominate. <laughs> you have all the knowledge. Well, I tried to do. I thought maybe I'll do a, a botany course. That's all that nasty mm -hmm. stuff. But anyway, a um, Ian Clark, botanist I know in Melbourne, he taught me how to do the plant pressing. And one of his things was, well, when you get your newspaper, you get two sheets of newspaper. And then he says, it's very important that you turn the newspaper upside down. And I'm going, oh, really? Why is that? And he said, so you don't get stuck reading old news. <laughs> <laughs> because these pressings, they go into the herbarium and they stay in their newspaper mm. for a long, long time until, um, until they get mounted onto card and then they get their labels written out properly. So they can stay there for a very long time. And so botanists get them out because they're studying that particular plant family or genus. And if it's like that, they'll go, I know many herbariums have groups of volunteers who come in to do the mounting. So they take it out of the newspaper and they put it on the card and they tape it down and they write their names and things like that. And do they use like, you know, with some art they have like acid free, is, is there a special card? Absolutely, to yes, use? acid free um, mm -hmm. cardboard. They use an acid free tape or acid free glue. When I was working at the herbarium in the 90s as the illustrator, I heard that they were still, that, that they had pulled some of the plants out from the Burke and Wheeler's expedition to mount. Ooh. 1860s expedition. So they must have just gone, oh no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but they were finally getting to them. Mm -hmm. You know, in their old places and everything. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Oh, yes, talking about buds, herbarium buds, they're called museum buds because museums have a lot of problems with um, buds that eat plants and animals. So there's different ways of trying to keep track. And for a long time they were using Yeah, whether 
words are not enough. <clears throat> because they're very valuable. Mm -hmm. And I don't think one is going to take it. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be very secure. All right, how to press a plan. I have two sheets of newspaper. And there's a couple of different ways that people do it, but I do it this way and I'll explain why. You have two sheets of newspaper like that. And And the idea is that what herbarium's like is that you have a nice, um, you know, artistic way of presenting the plants as opposed to just lumping together and nicely spaced but filled. Fill the page if you can. So we'll talk a little bit more about that on what types of plants to collect. So that sort of thing will give space for a label. The herbarium label will go in there. And then what we do, we put that paper down and then this paper down. The newspaper is the same size as a herbarium sheet. So the idea is that you wouldn't have anything hanging over the edge because you'll upset the herbarium manager. <laughs> and so anything that's long, like grass, you fold them to fit. So you've seen those ones where they, they fold them like a zigzag and they just go up and down like that until it's all on the page. Sometimes they cut, but they probably prefer them to be folded. One, two, and then what I do is just give it a gentle nudge. <laughs> you try to show um, both sides of leaves and both sides of flowers as well. So when you're doing that, you try to have some of them just hanging on one. So now, the idea here is that you would take a note of what you've collected because once your um, press is full and you're looking for a particular one, you don't want to have to open everything. Oh, that's not the one. Oh, that's not the one. So you just make a note down the side of the newspaper. So you put the date. The 4th of September and then you put the full year. 2021 um, because I have looked through newspapers with plants and they just have you know like a little mark and then they say 18 or something like that mm -hmm. 18, 19, or, you know, <laughs> 19, 19 or whenever it was so they like you to have the full year and then if you know the plant you write the name down you don't have to know the name of the plant because we're plant collectors, not botanists. Mm. The idea is that when that goes to a herbarium, the botanist will identify the plant, and that's the person who's called a deter the determinant. Anyone know? <laughs> I can say anything. <laughs> Someone who determines the name. Mm. And in some of these sheets, you'll see DET. Mm. And that's what that means, the person who determines it. I can't determine it because I don't know the species and, and I'm not qualified to. So it's a, it's a botanist who would name it. But I have an idea of the genus. So for me, I will put Lepidium. And if I didn't know it, I'd just describe it. You know, like strange yellow leaves or something. <laughs> and then I would put the place. That's Mount Magnet. And then the collector's name, which is usually your initial and then your surname, and then whoever else is an additional collector. You wouldn't necessarily write eight names. <laughs> <laughs> maybe two others, maybe, maybe three on the additional. And so this is where I'll explain to you why I fold the newspaper like that. Because um, some plants are very wet 
and they, the idea is that you need to dry them as quickly as possible. And, I mean, these are very dry anyway, so there's not usually a problem. But when you're drying them, sometimes this newspaper will get wet. And you think, oh, it's a little bit wet, I really need to change the newspaper. And so it's very easy to change the newspaper with this type of folding. Because all I do is take that away, and I've got another piece, and I put it there. So what you've got is you haven't disturbed the plants. Sometimes they stick to the newspaper or there's a whole lot of them and you don't want to have to reposition them. So you haven't disturbed the plants and you haven't lost your information. So I've seen people when they fold it a different way and when you remove the newspaper you've lost something. So you have to rewrite. Yeah, the ink ever if it's wet, does the ink ever transfer like and so then we put that on and then we do another plant. So you only ever have one type of plant in each in each bowl? Yes. And you never like mix plants. No, you wouldn't mix the plants um, unless I guess you're sort of running out of room or something and you're out collecting. But then you would resort that when you got back home. Um, some herbariums insist that you press in the field on the spot. And then we can't do these two. Because you're usually are outside, and I put my knee on that, and you do a slip knot. And that is the way I was taught. You just pull it fairly tight. You want the plants to be pressed flat, but not with the life squashed out of them, as was described in a book I just read recently. So you want to press it fairly hard. And then the idea is that you hold that there so it doesn't slip away. And it's a quick, easy slip knot. That took me ages to learn how to do that. So when we're out there, um, ask me if if you're having trouble with the slip knot. Put fairly tightly, hold that. Slip that in there like that. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a good idea to do it at the time, or you can do it back, you know, at home um, when you go to check whether they're drying properly to put a tag on. It's the same information that you've got on the side of the newspaper. So your name, your number, if you're collecting, if you have a collection number, um, the, the place, the date, and the name of the plant. <coughs> yeah. Just those basic bits of information get tied on there. I just pull it up with a drink bottle when I'm out there, just a couple of splashes. A lot of arid plants are very, very happy in there like that for quite some time. Mm. So if, um, even if I've got that in my back pocket and I don't want to lug that around, at least I've got something that I can pull. Alright, so that's, that's one part. The next part is filling in the label. And what you would use is your own piece of collecting book. And this is the sort of information that we would want. And what I have is, see this sheet of paper? I would say that I tried to crunch it down into point form because this, you don't want to be taking that out with you. That's just the, you know, um, evening movie. This, I would either have it in your back pocket, or even better still, you would fold it and put it in the back of your collecting book. So you can just double check whether you've got all the right information. So right there, you've got the things that you need to take. And you choose your plant, and you never collect rare and endangered plants. Um, the other thing that you need before any sort of collection is permission to collect. 
and which we have permission from the Shire Council um, to collect at the commons. But whichever land you're on, you need permission from whoever. You can get a, an official permit or you can just, just get permission from the landowner. So the idea is that we, you take a photo of the area and a photo of your plant. That's very good information to remember um, the information and plus it, it's a good idea to have it with the collection, with the plant collection. Press in the field. Right, right on the edge of... <coughs> All right. The information that you'll need, that's on the, on the back of that one. These are the things that we're looking to fill this out. So the idea is you fill it out in this book and then you come back and you fill that out um, you know, at the herbarium or at home or wherever you have these plants, these labels. Because that's the label that we go with the specimen. <laughs> This one you keep as a plant collector. So you don't ever lose your information. You know, sometimes they may ring you up and go, oh, that. And then you look through your book and you go, yep, that was this, this one. But this is the thing that goes with your plant collection. So, so, so the little part you just put in, yep. so do you pop that in with that? Yeah, after. Because it's too hard to fill it out. When you're out there, you see it's all nice and easy in here when you're out there. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a dozen parts, you've got a dozen strips. Yep. So you just fill that out and you get back. And because you have to um, check your specimens anyway, that they're drying properly, that's where you can fill it out and make sure it stays with it. So we need the date. Um, field identification is just if you know the plant. The collector, which is what we're talking about, the location. So, the location. The idea about the location and the locality is that someone should be able to read that description that you've written and find that same spot. <laughs> Which is a bit hard. So you can't sort of say, and I'm out to a few miles out of town. <laughs> you would have a GPS. Yeah. So when I'm taking a picture of the plant in the landscape, so then I can I don't like someone could actually find it later if there's some sort of landmark. And then I take a close-up of the plant so you can actually see what it is. And then I have a GPS app. I'm sure you've all got. <laughs> On an iPhone, it's called Compass, which is fantastic. It's that, there's that one there. And it's a free app, because I don't like paying for them. There's that one there. So how do you, so how, we just go to the store or something, how do you? Yeah, the app store. The app store, and, you, yeah. and it's just called Compass. Um, yeah, this one's just called Compass for iPhone. For the Androids, you can bring up another version. But bring up a smiling guy because years ago, a friend of mine, her mother called her. She said, I've just got the car. Can you tell me where the app store is? <laughs> And it gives me exactly where I am. And I'll show you that. either directly before my photo of the plant or directly after it so I can 
you make sure that the information goes on this label correctly. And luckily we will be at the same location so we can all do it together. And then you're putting in the substrate. This is the bit that I always think, because I look at, I love looking at detail of the plants. And I know Ben and Tara, they see the bigger landscape. And I find it really difficult to see the bigger landscape. So the substrate is the land form, the soil type, the vegetation type, that sort of thing. And then the host, if your plant is um, a parasitic plant and it's, on, it's hosting on another plant, it's good to identify that. The habitat is the plants that it's growing around with. And then the idea is to describe your plant as well. Um, small herb to 15 centimetres or you know, branching shrub, something like that. And then there's any other notes that you want to describe for some reason, you know, like um, good breeding season, good rain season, or prolific, those sort of things. And then there's if you have made any other duplicates, because often what you do is you make a collection for yourself and you send a duplicate to another herbarium. And so that's sort of all the information that they want in the herbarium collection. Um, if that's too scant, uh, it's not a very valuable collection for them. And sometimes if you hand it into a herbarium and it's not good enough, they'll, they'll ring you up or they'll let you know that you can come and pick up your collection. Oh. <laughs> in other words, I don't want it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And even if you can't, um, if, if you can't get that information or you don't know that information, you just sort of, yeah, but you just sort of turn up somewhere and you don't know the history of the place. I think that's the idea is that you put all that data in. So researchers look through that and then they go, oh, the daisies were only that high generally that year because they've looked through a whole lot of different collections and then they can sort of match it with, you know, rainfall or they can... They can sort of think themselves, oh, that was clearly not a very good year. Mm -hmm. Or it was a really good year. Mm -hmm. It's not like a different species. No, it's, it's just not like a different species. No, it's just the same as one. Yeah. And the same food. Yeah. yeah. All right, we go out and go. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you would undo your press. Interesting though. Yeah. <laughs> you get two sheets of paper out. Upside down. about the collection is that you get as much of the plant as possible it's too big to dig up the whole thing that one's too big so you would just cut branches down low whereas there's we may collect something that's small that we dig up and put a few plants in Again. Mm -hmm. Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a shocking photo. 
And what did you think it was called? It's SID, like a cider plant. But I think it's called SIDA. Cider is a genus of flowering plants in the mallow family, mallow Okay, so I'm doing Mount Magnet Commons. The knee on the press. Hold that so it doesn't slip. Pull towards your hand. Alright. So that's 